Now today, I have a message I call the total package from God. The total package from the total God. But it's called the total package. Now, before I go to the message of today, um, the churches are now reopening. The government has given guidelines and asked the churches to reopen. Now, what I'm saying, I'm speaking as the mouthpiece of God. Now, if somebody is the mouthpiece of a government, then he speaks on behalf of that administration. But if someone is not the mouthpiece of a government and he speaks on behalf of the administration, then the administration will say, no, he's not our mouthpiece and deny him. So if I'm not God's mouthpiece, then God has a duty to rise and deny me. But if I am his mouthpiece because I have access to his mind and he has given me such authority, then he will confirm what I'm saying. Amen? Now, I want everyone to understand in this life that one, there are about six aspects of our lives and they are all arranged in order of preference. In your life, there is God. In your life, you have a job, a work, a career, or a business. That's number two. Then, for those who are married, you have a spouse. And for those who have children, you have the children. And then you have a ministry. And then, I'm talking of majorly Christians, then you have the church. Now, I'm not going into detail of how this ought to be arranged. But what I'm saying is, God is not the same as church. God takes position of number one. And that's what Jesus said that, He that loves me, he that loves father, mother, or children more than me, is not worthy of me. So, God takes number one in the life of every Christian. Now, I'm not going to say what takes number two, or text because that would need me to give you scriptures to validate and explain, which is not what I want to address today. I just want you to take note of this. The church, which is the physical assembly you attend, is the last on number six. Your ministry is before the church. Your spouse is before the church. Your job and career is before the church. Your children is before the church. But God is number one. There's a difference between God and the church. In the Bible, Abraham walked with God. Abraham knew God. Even God said, Abraham knew me by Jehovah. But there was no church in the days of Abraham. The Bible says, Enoch walked with God and it was not for God took him. He walked with God. He had interaction. He had intimacy, intercourse with God. He was almost one with God. But there was no church in his days. So the church is a physical building. It's not, sorry, it's not a physical building because the Bible says God does not dwell in a building made with hands. The church is a gathering of two or three people that Jesus is in the midst of them, where he says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So what is happening is that people are confusing church with God. Now, in this pandemic, let me make one thing clear. If you check the uh, biblical history, you find that there were famine on the earth, that the whole earth was in famine. Satan does not have that power to cripple the whole earth with a thing like a famine. He cannot. There are things you must understand that Satan has limitations. He cannot create a child. If someone goes to a herbalist for a child, he cannot give you a child. He's going to decompress a grown human being they compress it into a little baby. They call it incarnation. He's going to incarnate a human being into the womb of that person. He cannot create. He is not Elohim. Elohim, the creator of God. Because you need faith to create and Satan has no faith. For without faith, it's impossible to please God. He created the eons, the days, the ages by faith. Hebrews Chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1. They were created by faith. So we, the ingredient for creation is faith. And Satan has fear, not faith. So he cannot create. He cannot do a global pandemic. No. 
He may be behind the pandemic, but you must understand that he cannot cripple the entire earth. The hand of God must be involved. He has a lot of limitations. He's not as powerful as people think he is. Now, in the days of famine on old, the Bible says in Psalm 104 in the time of Joseph, God called for a famine, and Joseph was appointed at that time to bring redress to the, redress to the children of Israel. So God was the one that called for the famine. Satan was the one that went about with the famine. You must also understand nothing, not Satan, no government, no institution can shut down all the churches on planet Earth at the same time. It is not possible. Only God can do it. What is the message? God shut it down. God will open it. Why has he shut it down? One of the things you must understand God deals with the church on seven different levels. He deals with the church on an individual basis, one on one. God dealt with Abraham one on one. Then he dealt with Abraham and Sarah as a couple. God dealt with Joseph one on one. He dealt with Jacob one on one. That's why he wrestled with Jacob. When he was wrestling with Jacob, everybody had left him. Elijah said, I, and this is what is going to happen before the Lord God Almighty, before whom, not before whom we stand, before whom I stand. When Moses was on the mountain, he was alone with God. So God deals with the church one on one as an individual. What is going on in this pandemic? God is dealing with the church on individual basis, one on one. And you must understand that, and he's not through yet. He's still dealing with his church on individual basis. God also deals with the church on denominational basis. That's why you read in the book of Revelation to the church of Simeon, right? I know what you're going through. I know you dwell where Satan's seat is. Hold on fast to the end. He will put some of you in prison. That's a denomination. He told the church of Philadelphia, I know thy strength is small. You have kept my word. I'll open a door before you which no man can shut. He's dealing with them as a denomination. The church of Laodicea, he said, you are wretched and poor, though you look rich. So God deals with the church like you have Pentecostals, Anglican, Methodists. They are all in order. It's not any division. It's in the Bible. But that's not what he's doing now. He's dealing with the church of one-on-one. -on -one. God also deals with the church universal. And that's the ministry of Paul. That's why you have what they call body ministries. And to the church, not to the church of Laodicea, to the church universal, I write. And God deals like that to the entire church world. And he has ministers in the body that minister to the body. Then he has ministers in the body that minister in the local assembly only. But he deals with the church universal. That is not what is going on now. God there are seven. I'm not going into all the details. God also deals with the kingdom of God, which is within the church. Oh, the kingdom of God is not the same as the church. The Bible says we are saved by grace through faith, for it is a gift of God. So you get saved through grace, not by burning candles, not by fasting, by just accepting Jesus. But the book of James he says, we enter the kingdom of God through tribulation. Now, that's not the same. You don't get saved through tribulation. We enter the kingdom through tribulation. The kingdom of God is within the church, but the entire church is not the kingdom. The kingdom are those who have the rule of God, who have collected the scepter. He is also dealing with the kingdom, but he's not dealing with the denomination, neither is he dealing with the church universal. He's dealing with the individual. Meaning, if he's dealing with the individual, it's not over yet. The government has opened the church. God has not. He's yet to open the church. I speak as God's mouthpiece. God has not opened the church. When he deals and is done with dealing with the individual Christians, he will lift the lead and open the church, and the pandemic will subside and crash. The time is closing, 
is wrapping up, is dealing with individuals in the church, but he is not through yet. I have no issue with those who have opened. God deals with each person separately, but I tell you, God Almighty, Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Most High, whose I am, whom I serve, has not opened the church yet. Amen. So don't forget, the church is not the same as God. You can go to church, you can sweep the whole church. It's fantastic. You will be rewarded for it. You can clean all the toilets. It's great. You will be rewarded for it. But that doesn't mean you will please God. Hebrews 11 says, verse 6, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You relate with God only by faith. Without faith, you cannot interact with him. So it's not the same. Amen. And God Almighty will help us and reposition his church when he's done with what he's trying to accomplish in the church. My prayer is that you and I will have risen to another height of glory, of discipline, of responsibility and accountability. But you and I know that the church before the pandemic cannot withstand what Satan is doing today. He will slaughter that church. But what God is doing now will bruise the head of Satan, crush him, and put him under the feet of Jesus. What are the works of Satan? They will raise the dead. They will cure all manner of sicknesses and diseases. He's raising a new breed. He's raising a new set who will cause monumental damage to the kingdom of darkness. My prayer is that you be among those whom he will choose, among those whom he will use. You'll be those 300 Gideon's army. And when the 32,000 is being trimmed and the 10,000, you will not be a castaway in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. The Lord deals with generations differently. In the time of Elijah, he dealt with the nation of Israel differently. In the time of John the Baptist, he dealt with the nation of Israel differently. How do you please God? Get him baptized. In the time of Jesus on earth, he dealt with the nation of Israel G differently. How do you please God? Believe on the resurrection and the life and the Son of God. How did he deal with the nation of Israel in the time of Paul, in the time of Peter? Repent and be baptized. How did he deal with the nation of Israel in the time of Paul? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your family, you shall be saved. And he has not changed from that policy till now. However, he has changed in his operations at different times. Just in the time of Kenneth Hagin, he dealt with the church by the principle of confession. And he says, let the whole church come before me confessing pleasant words into my ears. But now he's dealing with the church by works, the works of faith. He's dealing with generations differently. And you must understand this. God is not static. He's dynamic, very dynamic. Praise the Lord. You must understand this. That's why the pandemic, as evil as it is, has produced glory in some people has wrought death and destruction in some other people. My prayer is that it will produce glory in your life. It will produce uplifting in your life. It will produce blessings in your life in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. I also want us to understand that Jesus is coming soon and everything is pointing to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan does not want that to happen. So he's doing everything. Once Jesus comes, he has just seven years window. After seven years, 
will be bound and plunged into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. But those seven years will be seven years of tribulation. And in a thousand years in the bottomless pit, after a thousand years, he'll be released. And then he'll wage war with the Lamb and his saints. Where the Bible says he'll be defeated and he'll be cast into the lake of fire. So once Jesus comes, he has just 1,007 years to go. But you know what? Of that 1,007 years, he has 1,000 years in prison. Wow! He has just seven years to do what he wants to do on earth. My goodness. The Bible says the evil he will perpetuate has never been and shall never be because he knoweth that his time is short. So everything God is doing is doing as a preparation towards the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 1, he says that in the last days, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducive spirits and doctrines of demons. And if we agree we're in the last days, then it means there's a lot of doctrines of demons going on. What is a doctrine of demon? A doctrine of a demon is a doctrine based on the word of God that will not allow you to walk by faith. It will give you an impression of a security outside of God. That's why I said, some shall depart from the faith, meaning it will start with a coronation of faith, then move you out of faith. So all doctrines of demon are word-based. And if you remember, in his interaction with Jesus, he will always quote the scripture. A lot, not all, many motivational messages are doctrines of demons. They teach you how to live a life outside God. They teach you how to marry, looking at natural principles outside God. They teach you how to run your business, looking at natural principles outside God. So it causes you to depart from faith. It doesn't mean it's not in the Bible. It's in the Bible, but you depart. And that is going on so much now. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, In the last days, perilous times shall be here. And we can see all over the world, it's perilous times. With what just happened in Lebanon, we commiserate with those families. And I pray God will give them closure, give them comfort, and help them to um, get over what has happened. That's terrible. But that's what is going on everywhere. Maybe you're not aware, there was some flooding in China. Some people died recently. A, an earthquake, is it in Turkey or so? Or I can't remember exactly where it is. It's one disaster after the other. And all these pointers are letting us to realize that we are in the last days. And the age of the earth is being wrapped up. And that's why God is dealing with this church one-on-one. -on -one. And very soon he will move to denomination and to the body. Amen. So, we're in perilous times. Now, as the coming of Jesus approaches, evil will increase. The earth will degrade. Darkness will encroach. And disasters will rise. Now, I have not brought a gloom and doom message. This is one part. Now, Christians will be persecuted, which is what we are seeing in Nigeria. Nigeria now, Christians are being persecuted in Nigeria. It's part of the last day move of the kingdom of darkness. He's using his agents to persecute Christians. And despite all this happening, God said in the Gospel of Luke, he said, you shall see there will be earthquakes, pestilences, wars, rumors of wars, disasters happening. And the Lord said, don't fix your attention on the evil happening. Because in the midst of that evil, just before Jesus comes, your redemption too will come. Meaning, in the midst of that darkness... Like in Isaiah chapter 60, 
The glory of God will not rise on the earth. Don't make a mistake. It will rise on Christians. He said, upon thee, the glory of God will be seen. Your light will shine. Now the earth will be getting darker and worse. I think some people make a mistake. They think the earth will get better. No, it's not going to get better. The earth will degrade and get worse. But he said, upon thee, meaning it is a personal thing. It is here upon all of you, upon us. No, thee is a singular word, verb, for a person. So you're going to see individual rise. Independent, I'm trying to find the right word to use. You're going to find Christians rising one on one. And that's why the Lord is dealing with the church. Sometimes the church itself meeting is distracting people from the Lord's personal dealing. Sometimes all the activities of the church itself, sometimes you just need a solitude. Like Jacob, when you send on your family ahead and only you will remain, then the angel of God will appear. And that's the day your name will change from Jacob to Israel, that you are no more a supplanter, but now as a prince you have power with God and with men. And that is what is going on. God is giving men power over the operations of God and men. Don't let the crowd distract you. This is not the time for the crowd. I'm warning. I'm warning. So he said in Isaiah 60, and he said in Luke, I think 22, he said, you look up for your time to be glorified has come. Don't be distracted with the sad news you are hearing everywhere. Be concerned. Don't behave as if we don't have empathy. Christians have a conscience. They have empathy. So that's why I prayed for people in Southern Cardinal. They are our brothers. We have empathy and we'll pray for them. But don't let these things, coronavirus and all this happening, the headsmen, don't let it distract you from that individual dealing. What is the individual dealing of God supposed to accomplish? Supposed to accomplish you arising, you shining for your light has come and the glory of God to begin to rise upon thee. In Luke 18, Jesus talked about the kind of faith he wants to see when he's returning, which is in the last days, which he's coming soon. And he gave the parable and the story, so not a parable, a story of a widow and an unjust judge who was persevering. That's a Christian that has confessed a thousand times nothing has happened and is still holding his ground. Jesus said, those are the people I'm coming for. Meaning, in his dealing with people, if you don't have perseverance, that glory will not be seen. I'm giving you insights into God's personal dealings and God's personal requirements of people right now. He's not calling anyone to go and fast and pray. No! In fact, if you're not careful, the prayer and fasting can distract you. So, oh, scripture, in Exodus, I think chapter 12 or chapter 14, it, when Moses called on God, what is calling on God? Prayer. They were at the edge of the Red Sea. He says, stand still. And he called on God. And God said, why do you call on me? Meaning, I am not expecting prayers from you now. I'm expecting action from you, Moses. Take a step of faith and advance into the sea. So what is God saying? God is not saying you shouldn't pray. God is not saying you shouldn't fast. God is saying right now, what is demanding from you individually is a step of faith. And that will bring about God's personal dealing that will cause the glory of God to arise upon you, your light to shine. And the, it's also called the restitution of all things. In that Luke 18, that woman widow, if you take note of that story, she did not go outside of the judge for help. She didn't call her friends to join her in prayer. She didn't call her family to support her. You know, in Acts 4, when the, the disciples were persecuted, 
they went to their company to pray. And it's good. Corporate prayer is good. But what God is saying now, nah, what I need is your personal interaction with me. That's why I said in the last days, in Luke 18, when the Son of Man returns, will he find such people? Meaning, one-on-one -on -one is dealing. And it's requiring perseverance. It's requiring not wavering. He said to Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Stop dilly-dallying. It's requiring focus. It's requiring discipline. And it's requiring men who are ready to stand their ground to the death. And when God sees it, he puts that glory on their life. And they will shine. And they are the ones that will usher in the second coming of our Lord Jesus. But not only that, when that glory comes on your head, something will happen, which we want to look at. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.